The performance of the F-117 was as much about psychology as it was about physics. For pilots, flying the jet meant embracing its limitations while trusting its invisible strengths. Unlike traditional fighters that rely on speed and agility to survive, the Nighthawk relied on stealth and planning. It was never meant to engage enemy aircraft head-on. Instead, its flight plan was built around surprise. Every mission was carefully timed, often under the cover of night, with routes designed to exploit blind spots in radar coverage. Its two General Electric F-404 engines, buried deep inside the fuselage, gave it enough thrust to carry its payload across defended skies, but they were quiet compared to modern fighters. It could cruise without drawing the attention of infrared seekers or sound detectors on the ground. Pilots described the experience of flying the jet as unlike any other, it felt less like flying a fighter and more like operating a stealth weapon platform. The jet was not there to duel, it was there to disappear. The Nighthawk carried a relatively small payload compared to heavy bombers, but what it carried was devastatingly precise. Inside its weapons bay, it could hold two laser-guided bombs, either 2,000-pound GBU-10s or smaller precision munitions depending on the mission. The aircraft was designed to deliver these bombs with pinpoint accuracy. A laser designator locked onto the target, guiding the bomb all the way to impact. In practice, this meant the Nighthawk could cripple key infrastructure, radar stations, bridges, command centers, with a single strike, minimizing collateral damage and maximizing shock value. During the Gulf War, it achieved a mission success rate of more than 80%, far above many conventional aircraft of the time. This performance was part of why the aircraft developed an aura of invincibility. It wasn't about speed or maneuvering, it was about hitting what mattered most and leaving undetected. But the Yugoslavia mission revealed something about its limits. Its predictable routes, necessary for refueling and coordination with other NATO assets, made it vulnerable. Colonel Danny's forces learned to exploit these patterns, waiting for the moment when the aircraft would be most exposed. By using older radars at lower frequencies and modifying their tactics to keep systems hidden until the last second, they tricked stealth. The missile that struck the Nighthawk was not guided by cutting-edge computers or satellites, but by human observation, patience, and adaptability. The event showed that while the performance of the Nighthawk was revolutionary, it was not absolute. In terms of safety, the Nighthawk carried the essentials but no luxuries. Its primary safety feature was stealth itself, a shield of invisibility that made armor almost unnecessary, at least in theory. Its design minimized radar and infrared signatures, and its missions were planned to avoid any situation where it might have to fight or defend itself. Yet this reliance on stealth was a double-edged sword. When invisibility failed, the jet had little protection left. Unlike traditional fighters that might carry flares, jammers, or heavy armor plating, the F-117 was stripped down for stealth. Its skin was thin, its maneuverability low, and its defensive options limited. For the pilot, survival depended on staying unseen, and when seen, on ejecting safely. Lieutenant Colonel Dale Zelko's escape from the doomed jet in Yugoslavia highlighted the paradox, the jet that promised to be untouchable needed its human inside to endure the consequences when the myth cracked. The unique selling points of the Nighthawk were undeniable. First and foremost, it was the pioneer, the first aircraft to bring stealth from theory to reality. It embodied a shift in warfare, where invisibility became more valuable than raw speed or firepower. Its unusual appearance alone spoke of a future no one had imagined. Unlike bombers of the past that relied on massive payloads to overwhelm defenses, the Nighthawk proved that precision and stealth could achieve the same strategic impact with fewer weapons. It allowed America to strike deep inside enemy territory without losing pilots, a psychological advantage that reverberated across adversaries' command centers. Nations watched in awe as radar networks failed to track the Black Triangle slipping into their skies. For nearly two decades, the Nighthawk symbolized the edge of technology. Another unique quality was its role as a proof of concept for stealth doctrine. It showed that expensive, 
highly specialized aircraft could reshape entire strategies. The fear it inspired often achieved as much as its bombs. In Panama in 1989, its first combat use, the aircraft struck targets with such precision that enemy morale collapsed. In the Gulf War, it flew less than 2% of the missions but struck more than 40% of the strategic targets. That record gave it legendary status long before Yugoslavia. The price of the Nighthawk reflected its uniqueness. At roughly $42 million per unit in the 1980s, it stood among the most expensive aircraft of its time. Adjusted for today, that figure rises well above $100 million per plane. The investment went not only into the jets themselves but into specialized infrastructure. Maintenance hangars were equipped to handle the radar-absorbent materials that coated the aircraft. Technicians had to constantly repair and reapply coatings, check panel edges, and ensure every surface remained stealth-ready. The cost of operating one Nighthawk per flight hour far exceeded that of traditional jets. Critics questioned whether the expense justified the limited payload and single-purpose design. Supporters argued that its ability to neutralize high-value targets and save lives made the cost irrelevant. In many ways, the downing of a single Nighthawk by a missile system costing only a fraction of its price underscored the irony of asymmetric warfare, the most advanced technology can fall to the most modest defenses when conditions align. The conclusion of the Nighthawk story is both sobering and inspiring. On one hand, it revealed that no technology is invincible, that innovation invites counter-innovation, and that even the most advanced machines rely on the skill, creativity, and unpredictability of the humans who operate and oppose them. On the other hand, it marked the beginning of a new era in aviation. The legacy of the F-117 lives on in the B-2 Spirit, the F-22 Raptor, and the F-35 Lightning II, all of which incorporate lessons from the Nighthawk's successes and failures. The incident in Yugoslavia did not end stealth, it refined it. Engineers studied what happened, adapted, and created aircraft with fewer vulnerabilities. Pilots learned to vary routes, planners learned to avoid predictability, and adversaries learned to never underestimate persistence. The Nighthawk remains a legend. Its exterior still looks alien decades after its debut. Its cramped cockpit tells of a time when stealth was experimental and demanding. Its performance, while limited in speed and maneuverability, delivered victories that shaped wars. Its reliance on stealth as both shield and sword marked it as unique. Its cost made it controversial, but its impact justified its existence. And its downfall in 1999 turned it from an untouchable myth into a human story, one where triumph, vulnerability, and survival met in the skies over Yugoslavia. The lesson of the Nighthawk being shot down endures, invisibility is powerful, but never perfect. Technology can transform warfare, but it cannot erase the ingenuity of those who face it. The jet may have fallen, but its story continues to fly, a reminder that in conflict, as in life, nothing is beyond challenge, and nothing is ever truly invulnerable.